movieweb.com. This boy who's currently being looked after. Anything you do say can be used as evidence in any later court appearances, you understand? Yeah. Tell me if you agree with this. This boy who's being looked after, he knows who you are. And you've done some bad things, sweetie. So I'm going to begin by asking you, because um, to me the film sort of feels like uh, the, an Australian Goodfellas. I, I, and I was just curious what you thought about that, that comment and how the film sort of addresses family in general. I like the, you know, I like what, I, I love the scale of Goodfellas and I love, um, you know, that sense of it, of it being a movie that's teeming with different people and different places and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Goodfellas seems to move at a clip and, a, and has a certain kind of levity about it that um, isn't necessarily kind of the same as Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom, I wanted to be a big crime film in the same kind of, kind of way, but I wanted it, to, I knew I wanted it to be m menacing, you know. I wanted to have it, I wanted to have a, <clears throat> a, a menace that was underpinning the whole thing that would just build and, and you know, to all possibly even, you know, uncomfortable dimensions. Well, one menacing factor in the film is sort of the character of Pope. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about him because he sort of seems, I mean, is he crazy? Is he just evil? Is he just, I mean, what is sort of going on with that character? Because he's doing things that just are, are tearing the family apart. Well, I just think, <clears throat> you know, Pope is, a, Pope, Pope is the most emotionally damaged character in a, in a family of emotionally damaged characters, you know. And he's, he's the one who, in a way... Um, you know, is seemingly functional when the, when he's got a structure, he's got a career, if you can call armed robbery a career. He has family, he has, you know, a best friend. But as soon as some of the, the basic foundations of that structure are pulled away and they start to unravel as they do in the movie, then someone with his kind of emotional damage can be incredibly dangerous, you know, and uh, as he proves to be. Yeah, that's what we see in the film. Uh, and then Jay really is coming into this. I mean, he's sort of the audience's eyes. He's sort of the innocent character who then, mm. you know, obviously goes through something in the film. Could you talk a little bit about his journey, his struggle to sort of, he this feels like he knows what's right and wrong, but at the same time, it's his family. So he's sort mm. of torn between that dichotomy, correct? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's, as I think for all teenagers, you know, that transition from teenagehood to adulthood is a, uh, is about working out your place in the world, you know? Working out the, you know, and all you really want to do is feel comfortable. I mean, that's I think all that any of us want. And he just happens to be thrown into this incredibly dangerous kind of criminal world where, you know, feeling comfortable is, in, is difficult to do. And in order to, in order to make that happen, he needs to, he needs to engineer for himself, um, you know, he, he needs to engineer the environment in which he's going to be comfortable and it's just he has to travel a pretty nasty, dirty road to get there and, uh, and it takes him a while. Yeah, and he has some really tough decisions to make at the end of the film, as does Janice. Uh, and so I mean, it's kind of shocking the decision that she makes without giving too much mm. away. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about those tough decisions with sort of going through the characters' minds and, you know, is this sort of survival? I mean, that's really what's going on there is survival, right, of the fittest. I think so. You know, I think what you're, what you're looking at there is <clears throat> what some people might call evil in these characters, you know, for me is given, given the environment that, that they live in and the only environment that they've known, it's, you know, very often it's just cold pragmatism, you know. When you're living in a world where, where the stakes are so high and, and your lives are so marginally dangerous, you know, sometimes you have to make incredibly hard decisions, you know, because... Um, you know the, the, you know this is this is a world in which for people the difference between success and failure can be the difference between life and death and and uh, and w when put in those terms, you know uh, the decisions you make uh, can be uh, <laughs> uh, important. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I need to talk to you. You've done some bad things, sweetie.